Hello hi there guys, this is Sonny Moore and welcome to Sign Codes. In today's video tutorial, we'll be going over how to create a custom node inside of Godot. So, custom nodes are a pretty impressive feature inside of the Godot script and visual scripting language and they allow you to improve the visual scripting language by using GDScript, GSharp or other scripting languages. You can also use Visual Script to create a custom node as well. And this in turn helps you do a lot of cool things. Well, I created a GitHub issue about the inheritance and all that stuff, but back then I didn't know that even Visual Script can be used for creating custom nodes. Although it won't be so much fun, but it does work quite nicely. In my opinion, it can actually be used, so it's all fine. Now let's just get started with creating a Visual Script, but a Visual Node, a custom node, a uh, Visual Scripting custom node. Now that's right. <laughs> okay, this custom node has an event, has an action, and gives us a value if that action is pressed. So, this uses this custom.gd script, which is a quite simple script other than the functions, which have pretty, way, uh, pretty names, I should say, pretty long names actually. But this is how it is, and it's very well made, I believe. I've not had any kind of issues, and it has not crashed on me even once, so. Everything is perfectly fine, and if I play the game at the moment, you can see that it's working just as we intended to. If you've not seen my last video, you should go to the top and uh, just go and watch it. The card will be on the top and uh, top right corner of my screen, <laughs> of the screen. Sorry, on my screen. <laughs> the hell is happening today? And let's, um, as I've shown you. Uh, let me just show you guys that this is a Visual Script custom node, and this is uh, this node needs to extend from a Visual Script custom node class to be a Visual Script custom node. That's a lot of Visual Script custom nodes. I just close it. I'm gonna say save. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna close the scene. We don't need that scene. And you just go back, remove this output. Get a scripts. Go to on mouse input event function, and uh, what you see is that it has this call instance uh, node, which is quite well lacking and quite useless by all means. So I actually want to create a substitute for it, and which can directly do things, and we don't have to select it all action pressed and all that things. So if you can see, I have to select the base type, then is action pressed, and all that kind of silly stuff. But I want this to happen well quite smoothly. So let's create a custom node for it. Custom node. This custom node can in future be used for any kind of action pressed uh, if you have the event object. So it it is not it is not a completely unreusable node. So that's that's the reason why I chose this option or this alternative. Let's just quickly create a script. I'm gonna create a new GD script. And well, I should tell you that you should know a little bit about the GD script. But if, even if you don't, then just follow along. I will be explaining some of the basic stuff, stuff along the way. Uh, let's save as, and let me call it action pressed. <coughs> and I'm gonna give it two, two what the two keyword at the top. And this two keyword allows the script to run in the editor. And that's what we have to do. This script will be running in the editor, not at the runtime. And that's the reason why we need the tool keyword. And then extends. That is, we are inheriting from the visual. Uh, sorry. Script custom node uh, node. And now this is done now let's just save it and this is an actual working custom node although it has no variables nothing so let me show you how to create a basic variable now if i say uh, export int var uh int integer and let's go back and save and you can see uh if i just re this is a little bit of a problem with the visual scripting that we need to refresh this inspector uh, by changing the nodes and this is actually quite a major problem I believe but it's not been fixed by now but I'll probably create a bug report or issue report about this but until then we can see that an integer has been created 
and it, this is the one that we exported we can create all types of things you can create a node path and call it path we can create a tag scene call it scene and go back and hit save and you can see on reloading that everything is present here you can just go assign and select one of the nodes you can go new packed scene load packed scene you can just load one of the scenes and it's as simple as that now I, we don't need any of this so I'm just gonna comment oh so let me just delete it all out rather than commenting it we just save it over there and let's get started uh, with creating some of the functions that we'll be needing so the first step is to give a custom node a name so return name of the node so if you go back you can see the name of the node is name of the node well which is quite ironical but let's just give it a proper name now uh, let's call it action rest and as you can see that this node now belongs to the action press category and you can also give it a category function get I believe there should be ah yes there is a option for get category but I'm not going to be using this because well it's not worth using right now and we just need to create a simple example so I've created this function has input sequence port this will tell our node if it needs this uh, small a rect uh, triangular uh, box over here as an input and if it takes an input then it must also give it an output and whenever you will cre create a custom node that does some kind of a work inside of the step function you will likely need to use uh, this input sequence port so it's a good practice just turn it on and also give it a get output sequence port count so this is the number of outputs that it will give and this is uh, as we have to we have to set the number of outputs because you can only take in one input and have multiple outputs such as is the case with the if else or the conditional operator uh, inside of the scripts as you can see over here the condition has one input and three outputs so that's how it is now uh, for I'm just gonna say one because we just need one and now let's go to function and create another one let's just call it get get, uh, get input 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 and yeah get input value port count and just say return one oh sorry two uh, we will actually be needing two input value ports let's just say get input value port name let's just say if index equal to sorry zero then we can just say return so this is going to be the name of the first value input port and the name let's just give it the name event and the next one is going to the next one is going to be one that is the second input port it is just like an array so zero one starts from zero ends at uh well whatever the length minus one Simple enough. Return. Uh, we are going to return. Uh, we are going to call it action name. You can say, but I'm just going to say it action. And now the default value is going to be D default. And then finally, we can say function dot get underscore input value for type. But before we do anything with this, let's just go back and see what the changes have been made. So if you don't give any types, then this will take a default any type kind of an option. And this is how it works. But let's just quickly go and give it a type. And as you can see, it's event and action. So we can just go here, move this and connect this. just make it a little bigger 
and let me just connect the event and the action is you're gonna just type in the name as a string so for now we don't need anything let's just quickly give it types at the x equal to zero so when index is equal to zero we're just gonna return the type so Godot has these global type variables that you can use for this and just say type underscore whatever variable that you want to use I'm gonna say object and then we can say elif index equal to one then we can say return type underscore sorry return type underscore where the hell is the option and man there's no option let me just say type in string and I'm free well bad at typing today probably because my finger has been injured <laughs> a pretty silly excuse they just say object once again because I don't want anything to be of any other type or you can just say remove that or you can just say object it's all up to you it's it won't go affect anything but I just like to have defaults so that the fallback doesn't affect the type of code and I have a basic oh sorry what the hell Oh, <laughs> that was a pretty crazy thing that happened. <laughs> they just say, uh, create another function. Let me just first fold all of these. Just go to edit and go and say fold all lines and everything will be folded up for you. And you can now work with the space that you have. Pretty nice and easy, actually. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. It, it won't be get, get output. We'll say get output value port count. We're just gonna need one out. Uh, we're just gonna need one output. Well, because we're just gonna give it the value. We're just gonna give it one value, which is well going to be. Let me just type in the name first. UI left mouse button. So, as you might have seen in the last video, that uh, the I set up this action UI left mouse button. You can go to project settings and see that I've set up this action over here. You can watch my last video if you want to learn how to set up actions and I've create how I've created everything. The card will be on the top right right hand side. So just press it and you can go there. And now let's just create another function and let's make it get output port type. So this time we are gonna first set up the type. So index equal to zero. Then we are gonna say return type. This one is gonna be a boo. Let's just say return type object. Now I'm just gonna fold both of these and let's give our function some names. Or I'll put some names. So the names will likely going to be get output both name if index equal to zero. Now return. Let me give it a name or let's just say value. Value okay, and let's just say for def the default or fallback value is going to be default, so that's simple enough. And we have everything set up and ready to use. Let's just connect everything up. So, this is how our action pressed node looks at the moment. I'm just going to say UI left mouse button. And this is all that we need to set up. Now, the final thing that we need to do is set up the logic. And to do that, we need to create another method, which is, well, what the hell? We need to create another method, and I'm just gonna call let me just do this. And this method is going to be called step. So this is the method 
where all of our logic will go inside of and it is well quite a simple method it has inputs it has outputs it has start mode and it has working memory but the use of this method is quite complicated and quite confusing for beginners so let me just explain everything out you'll have an input array and an output array and what you need to do is just these are all going to be references so you just need to change the values of output uh, ports and you have to just return an, an integer if everything works out fine or a string error if something some kind of problem pops up so let's not go into the error part for now let's just say output zero the zeroth output is going to be equal to inputs zero dot is action rest and we're gonna say input one this is gonna give us the value if the action pre if the action is pressed or not and this is all that we need to do now we're just gonna call the return and gonna set it to zero because if you don't set it to zero then it will just give us an error rather than uh, moving forward so that's how it happens and let's just play it and see if it works so if I click the button yes it's working so this is how you create your very own let me just unfold everything and show it to you unfold all lines let me just make it a little smaller I hope it's clearly visible on your screens this is the whole script that you need to create it consists of pretty basic functions and pretty easy to understand concepts but it's a little lengthy and tedious process but once you get used to it you can just copy and paste most of these things and create pretty awesome custom nodes which you can use in your future projects for easier prototyping and making visual script in ghetto a whole lot more powerful so i believe that visual scripting will improve uh, if you guys learn how to do custom nodes and i'll be making a short library of custom nodes soon enough and posting it on my github so whenever i do that i will be creating a video with it and showing how to use each of those custom nodes for now i'm just gonna put this and let's just create a character controller in the next video so that you can learn how to do more complex stuff with the custom nodes and that's it for now see you guys later and if you like the video like it and if you want to subscribe please do and hit that bell notification button so that you can just keep up with my videos so because i'm just going to make a quite few of them in this week because this is the only week that i've got a little bit of free time the next week i've got another set of exams or papers i'm just well in a whole lot of pressure and my last exam did not go so well so bye for now